on tonight's show. We have engineer, actress, and influencer, Cixi. And now for your host, Cool Park. Welcome, welcome back, everybody. Episode 82, Kicking with Cool Card. I am your host, Cool Card. Yes, man, it's, I'm telling you, these episodes are racking up. I'm loving it. I'm loving the guests I'm having on here, and I appreciate everybody that comes on here and sits here and is transparent with me and just, you know, gives themselves to you guys, man, because I do it for you guys. I can't do it without you. So I encourage you, if this is your first time, I encourage you to subscribe so I can continue bringing you the value that my guests bring you, all right? It's not about me, it's all about them. We're tapping into their journey, to their struggles, to their breakthroughs, successes, all of that, just to bring you some value, to bring you some nuggets that you could take along, put in your tool belt, and be great in life. Um, last week, I had uh, on episode 81, I had Brie from Brie and the Fella. She's an R&B singer. She has a live band. She performs every night in Dallas. I forget the um, the location that, be, that she performs, but if you could check her out at, uh, at brieandthefellas.com. Check her website out. Her schedule should be there. You can also check her out on Instagram at Brie Like Free and also Brie and the Fellas. Very, very talented. Very dope. She has a new album out called called and <laughs> calls called it bees like that sometimes so head on over to uh spotify apple music anywhere you can stream music it is there it is dope i co-sign it all right you heard it from me cool card but hey this week this week i have someone i've never interviewed an engineer before she is a mechanical engineer but yet she's also an actress an influencer a philanthropist she's an investor she does it all. She loves to travel. And we're going to jump and dive in into all of that and just pick a brain. And hopefully you can get some value from her. And I know you will because she is a, a brilliant woman and she's doing great things, guys. So I'm going to introduce her with a nice warm welcome in the intro, the cool way, like I like to do it. And we'll bring her on in. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I have Cixi joining me tonight. Welcome, Cixi. Thank you so much. Hi. Thanks for having me. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Hey, I have to say that you are unique in the sense that I've never in interviewed a, a mechanical engineer. And I go out of my way to try to find people from different walks of life doing different things, doing great things in their career to interview, to bring on, just to give something fresh and new. And exciting, you know what I mean. And yeah. you have you have also a unique name. Can you just found on that? Where, where does your name derive from? Well, um, okay, so I was actually named by my dad. Um, it is a Greek name. It also has an Italian translation, but it means chosen by God. Mm. So, okay, yeah, yeah, that's dope. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like. Thank it. you. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of people ask, "Is that a nickname?" I'm like. <laughs> Nicknames are supposed to be easier, <laughs> you know, like it's not. <laughs> yeah. So you do have some yeah. Italian in your family because I saw some pictures and stuff that you had went to Italy and met some family and stuff like that, right? Or did, did they come That's, out here? No, no, no. So those family members, they live in Connecticut. So they're okay. here stateside. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. But I know you do do a lot of traveling. I do, yeah. I do, I do. You do. You're like a travel blogger. That should probably you probably put that on your website too. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting is that um, it it all started with me just traveling a lot for work, uh, and okay. no matter yeah, and whether it's work or personal, I always make sure that I have me time. Yeah. So I have you know excursions planned out, just everything, and I do a lot of research beforehand, so yeah. I know like what spot to go to, where to avoid, where to yeah. eat, because that's a big part of it. 
Um, and so yeah, I love to get away. Yeah, and, and that's really imperative because that way you can experience where the indigenous people reside, exactly. eat, you know what I mean? Party, exactly. whatever. So yeah, so exactly. I, you know, I try to do that myself. Like me and my wife, when we go out places, we, well, she does, I don't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> But we definitely do our research and find where the tourists will not go for the most part. Exactly. You can exactly. Really take it in and take in the culture. So yeah, man. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So well, that, and I, go ahead. you know, with the traveling, I feel like we ha we need to do that, right? Like you learn about other cultures yeah. because you see a lot of times people are really closed minded, right? Yes. And I feel like one way to get out of that box, you know, especially in America, is to get out and see you know, other cultures, because it's not always how it's portrayed, you know, in the media. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Oh my God. The first time I went over to Europe, it blew my mm -hmm. mind because I'm like, I'm looking at it. And I, I, I promise you, this, these were my exact thoughts. I'm looking at it. I'm just looking at how people move and how they, how they yep. act in their work and they have their siestas and they could take a three hour lunch and this and that. Exactly. I'm like, listen, I love it. Cause there's no stress about money. There's exactly. no emphasis put on people about make that dollar, make my exactly. money, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like people are people no matter where you go. It's all the yep. same. If you get over there, you will realize that they're living their life just like you and I. It's no different. Mm -hmm. I mean, some places, you know, the economy stressed a little more. Uh, there's warfare, there's internal warfare, there's religious yep. wars, stuff like that. Yes, we get all that. But at the, at the root of it all, people just want to be happy. They want to have peace. Yeah. Just because they're warring don't mean they don't want peace. You know, exactly. these are little terror exactly. cells. These are little, re you know, rebellious union. So units and stuff like that. So yeah, man, it, it, it's amazing. It like blew my mind. So now I've been over there a couple of times and I mean, I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. I know um, when I was out in Paris, like you hear a lot of Europeans and even people in Spanish countries talk about how um in america we work so hard you know and to be honest you never get paid what you're what you're putting in okay. you know what i mean um and they always say that you know like we are i guess programmed to work so hard so for me i look at everything as okay what's the value like what am i what am i bringing and what am i getting back from that because to me that actually helps you decide okay am i where i should be at i mean am i fulfilled yep. am i you know getting any type of return on my investment okay right <laughs> so it makes a huge difference yeah and i was thinking to myself like you know well people will say like my friends will be like oh you're cheap and i'll be like yeah i am i am cheap <laughs> I get, no, hear me out. I get what I like. Right. I have, you know, I like gadgets, stuff like that, you know, shoes, clothes, whatever. I get what I like, but I don't spend frivolously, frivolously. I don't do crazy stuff, outlandish stuff, but I spend where it matters. And the number one yeah. thing that I focus on is always traveling because traveling, those, yeah. are, those are the times that you're going to make the memories. Now, yeah. those are the things that are going to last. All this other crap. That people are splurging on it's cool to have it i'm not saying it's not cool to have it if you know you work hard you want to enjoy it cool good i got nothing against that but for me yeah. it's, it's more about traveling you know creating the memories that will last because when i'm yep. dead and gone somebody's gonna have that memory somebody's gonna have that photo you know what i mean yeah yeah i agree i i look at everything as an experience whether yeah. that's traveling going to a football game i'm a huge football buff um Let's you know concerts we'll like talk about things that. like that oh yeah. we need to talk about that. yeah we need to talk about bama because that's that's my team right there <laughs> well and that's the topic of discussion <laughs> uh but yeah everything to me because that when you look at things as an experience you don't feel like you wasted money so if i say okay for this trip i'm gonna you know maybe budget 10k or however much right at least you know okay i know like where my money is going yeah. i know i'm gonna feel build afterwards i'm not gonna have to worry about okay you know i regret that i did this should i get my money back or things like that you shouldn't have to worry right. about that yeah it's all yeah. about the experience man i'm all in i'll spend a lot on the trip mm -hmm. but, but other stuff i'll be like eh, eh, you know I'll be yeah like, yeah but yeah but hey listen before we go any further we gotta get this prayer in i like to start okay. all yep. those with a prayer so real quick Got to give it up to him. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this moment, for this night, for this time together, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, to come together, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, 
to con to converse and follow Jesus and just talk real life topics, real life things, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and just 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 provide value to the end user. Whoever watches this, we pray and ask that they take something positive away from it and it changes their life, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We just thank you for just waking us up this morning, Lord Jesus. We just give you all the glory, all the love, all the praise, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, for protecting us, guiding us, loving us, lifting us up, and shining your light down on us. We thank you for getting us through COVID, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, for those, there's so many people that didn't make it, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and the hearts go out to them. Lord Jesus, we just thank you with all that we are, with all of our hearts, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed. Keep Let's God first in everything. Got to. Everything, man. Got to. Everything. Got to. Without him, yeah. I tell people, and I don't want to go for left field, but man, I used to. Okay, just real quick. Awesome. Real, it don't have to be quick because, hey, don't have me testify because I will. <laughs> we will go straight to church. <laughs> we will go straight to church on this live. All right, so listen, I just want to say this and then we're going to get back to the root of it. I want to talk about when you went to Bama and your, your degree and all that and where you are now. Right. And all, right? But I just want to say this. Without God, you are subject to do anything. And I used to not understand. I used to ridicule and I used to judge people who would commit suicide. Right. Mm. It's like a lot of people do. Oh, they're selfish. They're this, they're that, whatever. Right. Well, I got depressed in 2009. Entire year. I was at my lowest. There was nothing that could save me. But God, if you're not rooted in God, you're willing to do anything. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm I'm less, I'm more compassionate for people because if they don't have God in their life, they're subject to do anything. They'll do it. They'll take their mm -hmm. life. I know mm -hmm. I wasn't gonna do it, but I understood it then. You know what I mean? I understood yep. where they were. I really understood how low you could go and how you feel like nothing, like nope. literally nothing. You don't care. It doesn't matter who loves you, what responsibilities you have, who's around you. You just don't care. Not because you don't want to care, but you just don't know how to come out of it. And you just you mm -hmm. rest on God. You talk to God, say, God, have your way with me. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It's your will. Yep. And in time, he'll bring you out of it. But there's nothing that anyone can do or say to bring you out of it. Nope. it. It's nothing but you and God fighting that fight. And if it's just you with no God, there you have it. Suicide right there. It's easy. Right. It's easy. Right. I get it. Yep. You know what I mean? So right. just to say everything starts with God. Everything relies on Yeah, It has to. It has to. That's why you see so many people, you know, celebrities and people with all this money and they they go through the same thing a lot of them commit suicide and it's like money can't buy you know that fulfillment that you get through god um At all. i mean i i always talk about that because i know you know in engineering any type of science related field you don't really need a lot of people who believe in god for whatever reason um and so i for me i'm not gonna not talk about god because i know like where i could have been and probably should have been right. but i'm not so right. i'm thankful um but yeah i i definitely understand what you what you're referring to yeah so. a lot of people in the science field they just believe in science huh Yep, all about science and it's always because i think that um we're we're kind of programmed to to believe that there's always a physical answer to some degree so yeah. like okay you can't see god which anyway That's so it. they see that at right right so they look at it like okay the big bang theory or things like that where right. you know the universe just whatever they you try can, to yeah you can quantify you can yeah. you, you know what i mean there's an answer to it like you can justify it like okay this happened this was the reaction this happened you know what i mean and that's that's yeah. the thing yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that that in itself has been challenging just because you see certain things or you hear certain things. And, you know, of course, you have to keep religion and politics out of the workplace. So it's like finding that balance to where you can witness to someone without crossing the line. If right. You will. Right. Without um, HR getting involved. <laughs> yeah. And then you, then you have to lay hands on them. <laughs> Then you gotta pray for everybody. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You gotta lay hands on everybody in that whole office. Like right. y'all got one more time. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to talk about um, you, just basically uh, mechanical engineering. Can you kind of get into the nitty gritty of what you do? Your degree, you came, your alumni, Alabama, Go okay. Tide, Roll Tide. 
Time. We'll talk about all that. But yeah, just kind of give us the insight on that. Uh, okay. So I, so I'll say that I knew that I wanted to be an engineer when I was in the eighth grade. Okay. So I was 14, 13, 14 years old. And I remember um, our science teacher gave us a project where she basically said she wanted us to go home and do some research on what we wanted to be when we, when we grew up. Mm -hmm. And I just remember that even when I was small, I always had a thing for cars. Like I was crazy. So like in my room, my bedroom, when I was young, I would mm -hmm. have pictures of cars on the wall. Like it was just stuff like that where you right. wouldn't expect for a girl. And I started to kind of feel weird about it because, you know, everyone has like the doll houses and all this, you know, pink and purple stuff. Well, my colors were red and black. So <laughs> I was just, I was just always like the different one. And that's where God came in because I had to learn like my identity and know my identity so that I wasn't easily swayed because clearly right. he had me on you know a specific path but um I just remember the the project and what I um based on my research I knew that I wanted to get into a field where I would be working close with cars um okay. specifically for cars that I like so like the exotics you know and then also like the Mercedes all of those right. so um that was the path and i knew that initially it was industrial engineering that i was thinking about but i knew that you know you don't want to be you don't want to touch the surface you want to go underneath and figure out okay like how does things work okay and then that's where mechanical came from so that's where i learned okay your gears and your motors and all of that oh, good wow. stuff yeah yeah that made a that made a huge difference to where once i actually graduated college i was able to work in different fields whether that was like transmissions or whatever the case may be and i wow. understood it yeah okay. like it, it made sense so um yeah so um that was you know when i was young so i kind of knew early on and i know um it was challenging because leaving middle school i wanted to kind of follow the crowd and like go where they were going for high school sure. but that my mom wasn't having that <laughs> so i <laughs> So I went to um, a magnet school for high school and it just so happened that this school was pretty new and we had something called academy at the high school. Okay. Uh, we had, I think, six of them and one of them was engineering. So what that meant is in ninth grade, you basically declare like what academy you wanted to join. And so mine was engineering. And from 10th to 12th grade, you take um, a class specific to whatever academy you chose. So mine was engineering. Okay. And then we even like graduated with the color tassel, same as you oh, would wow, in college. Okay. So it was really cool. Um, I learned some fundamentals there and I had a, I was really into drawing. So I used to draw cars and buildings and things like that. Um, that but yeah, so that's, yeah, yeah, that's where it started. I was always like the one where I used to try to suppress it because I knew that, okay, like, I'm a girl, like I should be, you know, trying to be a cheerleader and doing this and this, yeah. but I'm out here like literally like taking apart a computer, you know, things like that, that made no sense. But I, I love it now. Every time I think about it, I'm just like, dang, like, you know, it's cool to be different because those are the ones that make that money, you yeah, know? For sure. But when you're, yeah, but when you're young, you don't, it's so much pressure, yeah. you know, and it's just, you, you don't see it that way. And so I think, um, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, but college, um, I did, I went to Alabama and, um, I really didn't have an option because basically I have relatives that played at Alabama and played football there. Oh, okay. So yeah, so that was the only option, especially if I were to stay in the South. So basically I was born in Oklahoma and then I moved to Alabama when I was young, maybe seven or eight years old, mm -hmm. um, moved to Montgomery and I lived there for a while. And then I went to university of Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> I know. Gumptown, right? <laughs> ratchet Gumptown, ratchet Gumptown. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I, um, I went to university of Alabama and, um, it was quite an experience. I mean, I, a lot of the, a lot of the Southern schools still have a long way to go when it comes to diversity. And I know that um, my biggest challenge the entire time I was in college, it wasn't it wasn't studying engineering. Cause for me, that was stuff that you can learn, you can figure it out. Like it's not 
It is, it is difficult, but I feel like if you put in that extra time, you can learn it. You can, you know, and then you can, you know, go with the, go talk to the professors if you're having a hard time. Right. The hardest thing was more so me being in class and not seeing anyone that looked like me in my classes. That was what was the most challenging mm, part because especially of, in those classes, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that, that makes a huge difference, you know, because here you are, you know, in a classroom where everyone usually groups up and you work on projects together or whatever the case may be and if i'm like the only one that looks like me and you're in an area where it's you know pretty racist to be quite honest i mean we we know the history um that made it that made it challenging but um i was and there were times to be honest where i did i was on the verge of giving up i remember um i think in my calculus two class i um I remember walking into the classroom and I had been in that class for some for some time, but I remember walking in there one day and like literally everyone turns around and looks at me like, what are you doing here? You know, it was just oh, it was wow. always like that cold feeling because not only am I a person of color, I'm also a female. Exactly. You know, and yeah. um, so they, they're just like, you know, why are you here? So you have to work harder. Yeah. Um, but I remember texting my mom in one of those classes and I was like, I'm about to quit. Like I literally told oh, her man. that. Yeah, yeah, it was that. Uh, it was really challenging, but thank God it, it was. That was all God. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you stuck with it because you know, let's just be honest. People that look like you and I don't really chase that profession much. Mm -mm, and how? How? Do, here's the thing, though. How do we change that? Like, what do we need to involve our children with or in to spark that in them? Because it, it's in them it's just all about yeah. guidance it's all about finding that interest you know what i mean because if you yeah. if all you see is baby dolls and football and this and that all the time you're not gonna think any further than that because that's just yeah. what you grow up knowing and that's what's pushed in your face so much so what do you think being an engineer what do you think we people of color could do to spark that in our kids man and say hey you know what i do have an interest in that and kind of change the complexity <laughs> in the complexion yeah. in those classrooms complexity of the complexion yeah <laughs> i would <laughs> that was good i would say um for the parents it makes a huge difference when you are open you know when when you allow the child to express themselves because i noticed that even when i was in college there were i had a few friends where they were studying what their parents wanted them to study mm -hmm. It wasn't necessarily what they wanted. And my, my thinking was always, okay, well, you're the one that's going to have to work in that field, you know? Yep. So, you know, like you can't live someone else's dreams. I don't care who they are. Exactly. Um, but I feel like it has to start at a young age. And I, I think that with just the word engineer, that in itself is, intimidates a lot of people. Yeah. And I, yeah, even like people, my my parents age you know what i mean yeah. like even you know that age group they they hear that word and there's just you know this stigma or like this intimidation yep. um which i get because it's not it's not easy per se but i feel that you have to uh, make sure that the kids are in extracurricular um organizations or groups or whatever is available because i know for me i didn't have a mentor uh, when i was young per se but i remember anything because and i don't know if it's because i knew at an early age what i wanted to do but anything that i found especially in high school that had anything to do with engineering i was i was all in you're all um, in we yeah, had, yeah 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 we had something called um engineers explorers program and that was across i think the state of alabama so we would meet um in the evenings like i think once a month or something like that so i remember my mom like she would always take me there um she never had an issue with that she encouraged that and i think yeah. that she and also because she was so good in school um she knew and, and she knew some of the challenges so she would she would always push you know me and my sister and my brother you know and academics mattered like right. we couldn't come home with no crazy grades and then yeah. you know expect things to go well so we knew that we had um certain standards to to kind of live up to per se but um there were a lot of organizations that i was a part of um technology student association um NASA, they so they're located in Huntsville, Alabama, yeah. and they had 
a summer program every year um, for high school students. And so you're actually doing like a lot of like science and math. And that really prepared me for, um, for college. So I would say getting them involved in those. And you have to be intentional when you seek that stuff out. Yeah. Um, but getting them involved early to where it, it's not, it, there's not that fear factor behind it. You know, I feel like when they get exposed early and, and, and as a kid, you're very creative. You, mm -hmm. you have that, like, I think I can, I know I can mindset. So that's right. the perfect time in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and you said something that, that hit me like really people hear the word engineer and they're intimidated, but they don't even know what you do. They don't even know the, yeah, the that's exactly. And, yeah. And that's why I asked you like, okay, get into the nitty gritty. So I, my next question for you is like, what can you give us a, what do you do on your daily? Like, what is your job like? Yeah. Um, okay. So I, so I've always worked in the automotive industry. Okay. Um, I started out at this company where we were making certain, uh, interiors like, uh, like your dashboard, which is your okay. instrument panel. Um, for Mercedes, I was on the Mercedes team and um, that was really cool. Um, I got to meet, you know, certain people and um, it was just, it was a really good experience. But then I went to Honda for four years. So okay. um, particularly their transmissions. And now that anything powertrain related, like transmissions or engines, you usually won't see a lot of females, mm -hmm. but you learn a lot, um, I think from a technical perspective. And, and I think that that's where the things that we learn in college, that's where I was able to apply it, like your different formulas and all right. that good stuff. Um, so I've always worked in the automotive sector. And so my day to day, my day to day job, um, I'm doing a lot of leading. I do a lot of leading um, to the point where so I have like a team where it's like uh, mostly software engineers, um, okay. a lot of electrical engineers, just based off of our designs. We're designing different parts for the vehicle. So okay. like more so your, um, we call it like a head unit, like your radios or things mm -hmm. like that, um, displays, stuff like that. Um, now we're getting like cameras, a lot of cool stuff that I think a lot of people would be interested in seeing. Um, but I work oh, on the, yeah, I work on the advanced engineering side. So we develop a lot of the concepts, like things that you would see a few years out, if right. you will. Um, okay. So you ha yeah, you'll have multiple teams, like where you have your production, your current uh, production. So it's like current design, but I'm on the advanced side. Um, so I just lead a lot of, you know, people. Uh, and, you know, we have different projects. We have, um, it's kind of twofold where you're leading projects from an advanced engineering perspective of new concepts, new designs, and then also working on the customer side where that would be um, like your Fords, your GMs, your Hondas, all of them. And we work on new business pursuits. So I have to, you know, basically work on million dollar projects with them where we're trying to win new business with them. So that can be, that can be challenging, um, wow. but I think it's cool. So. Wow. So there you have it, y'all. If you want to know what a mechanical engineer does, <laughs> I'm telling you because, listen, like you said, people are intimidated of just the word, but they don't even know what you do. You yeah, I would it. say mechanical, I wanted to, I didn't want to box myself in. So mechanical engineering is like your more broad engineering okay. field. So you have like your civil, mechanical, chemical, biomedical, aerospace, okay. so many different fields. And computer science, so if you wanted to go the software engineering route, but for me, mechanical is more broad. Okay. So what that means is once you graduate, you can either, of course, work as a mechanical engineer or project engineer, um, let's see, reliability engineer, so many different options. So you don't have to stay in that one particular okay. uh, field, if you will. Um, so for me, I've kind of gotten out of that to where I can still I can still use my mechanical skills if I want it, and sometimes I have to, but I'm more on the leadership side at this okay. point where I'm like, okay, yeah, that design makes sense, or no, you know, we need to get okay. more software engineers in on this, you know, right. we, we have to fix So you're project code. managing the people yeah. who are getting into, okay, got you. Who are getting in, yeah, I guess. Yeah. So it's definitely, it's, it's, it's really cool, but, um, yeah, it can be challenging. So do you, do you know how, like, the whole entire, do you know how a transmission works? Like, yeah, I know how it works, but to be honest, I wasn't, 
I don't work there anymore, so I can say it. <laughs> okay. I wasn't like super interested in it, so I never like really allowed myself to go too far with it. So okay. like your your torque converters, like your different gears, all that good stuff. Okay. I understand it. I understand how that works. I understand mm -hmm. you know like the rules as far as like okay, you know this is how often you should get your transmission fluid flush. Right. You know I got to be like under the cars when we change out transmissions and all that good stuff. But of course I didn't do that with my nails. But, right. <laughs> you know, I, had to make sure, I had to make sure that it got done. So, right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. So where did acting come in with all of this? Oh, well, <laughs> um, so I, I had an interest in acting for quite some time. Um, but I, I always kind of shied away from it because I knew that it's almost the complete opposite of engineering. Uh, so like with engineers, they don't want to be in front of the camera, right? Like they, especially because I work around a lot of software engineers, um, you're so used to seeing pretty much any engineer, just you're glued to a computer all day long, or you're out like in the field doing something where okay. you're more of an individual contributor. You don't want to, you don't want to have anything to do with being in front of people. And, and you see that. And I know, um, like even in college, I, it was a goal of mine to not be socially awkward, <laughs> if yeah, you will. Not be like a I typical always, engineer. Yeah, 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 because everyone has an eye. So I, I always get like wherever I am, you know, Oh, what do you do living as soon as I say engineering oh you don't look like an engineer I've had you know female engineers say that and so there's this stigma about what you have to look like and how you have to sound how you have to dress like all of that and I'm just like okay I was never in a box I never will be in a box yeah. so push that box to the side <laughs> um <laughs> but the acting um I've always had a thing about being in front of the camera because I've always wanted to make a difference. Okay. Um, I know that, that that really started in college, but it wasn't in the the realm of acting. It was more so, I guess, like the photo shoots and the modeling and things like that. And I always envisioned, you know, okay, I want to land a pretty big gig to where I have a voice, where I have a platform. Because okay. I feel like a lot of people, they have a platform, but they don't really use it for a good cause good, per yeah, se. Good, yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's so much that people can do, especially because everything is like internet based now. You yeah. know what I mean? You have social media. So it's really no excuse. Yeah. Um, but I would say the acting came up maybe eight, nine years ago. Um, I started having the thoughts and the way I am, I, I'm a researcher. So I started looking into it. Okay. Well, you know, what are the, what are the key terms that I need to know? Or what is it really like, you know, with your, your auditions or your callbacks, all that good stuff. And, um, so I wanted to have like that knowledge and, you know, just watch different interviews of some of the actors that I really like. Um, and I know at the time I didn't have the schedule to where I could just leave and go to an audition. So that became a challenge and I had right. to kind of, you know, put that to the side. But then over the last couple of years, things shifted, you know, things transitioned to the to the point where I could do both. Like I could do the engineering and the acting. Of course, that means my day is completely full, right. but I'm able to do it. But I have to have. I have to have a gap in between because it's so it's challenging to switch your brain from being super technical to creative, yep. if you will. Yeah, yeah, you know what sure. I mean? And then plus I'm left-handed. So oh. that, you know, you, you just think differently, you know? And so yeah. I have to, I have to like try to manage that to where I can bring like my best self to both engineering and acting. Um, but yeah. I think that's everybody's biggest challenge is working on that. Yeah. I haven't, and then, you know, auditions, whatever you got to do. So if you were to book a gig, so say you booked a movie and you had to be away for three months, how would you work that? Well, my thing is like, at this point, I am, at this point I'm working, I'm, I'm keeping the engineering because I want to, in a sense. Um, uh -huh. There's still things that I want to learn. Uh -huh. um, and some of that I can learn, you know, in my spare time. But I think the thing about the engineering and just working, um, in the corporate environment, you really learn how to conduct yourself. Um, there are things that you learn that I don't think if I were to just join, I'm so glad I didn't, but I, if I would have just jump into acting fresh out of college, 
I would have messed up. There are some things, yeah. you know, even from a personal standpoint, you know, your your self image or you know what you really want. Yeah. It takes time to learn that stuff, and so I'm so glad that it it panned out the way that it did. But um, yeah, I mean, me booking something like man, it's no cool. I, I've I've done some things, but I've been able to manage it as far as my my you know work schedule, schedule or whatever. But I know that. You know, when it comes to like your episodics or your feature films, where you may be, you know, out in another country. Right. Um, hey, I'm, 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 I'm ready. Pack it up. I'm ready. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Say the word. I'm good. You know, yeah, like, absolutely. Yeah, I'm in the same yeah. boat. I'm in the same boat, man. Say yeah. the word. Say the word. Say as long as, word, as, yeah. long as it's worth it, you know. Sometimes yeah. people say, "Oh, well, you know, any opportunity is a good opportunity," but sometimes it's just not worth the sacrifice. Yeah. What exactly got going on you know because then you come back and it's like oh okay i did that yeah what now you yeah. know what i mean but yeah definitely yeah. if it's worth it yeah yeah please man without question yeah deuces you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah no you I, you really do have to you have to weigh that i know yeah. a lot of people want to jump at whatever opportunity that comes to them but not every opportunity for at least the way i see it not every opportunity is from god yeah, you know some absolutely. of it is a counterfeit and if it's a counterfeit it's just going to distract you from your 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 goals that you should be pursuing yeah. you know so for me i pray about everything i don't if it's a friendship relationship job whatever it is because i don't want to I, I don't like to waste my time so right. if it's you know something in my career that i should be doing or pursuing if it's a counterfeit it's just going to take that time away and it's just not worth it so. yeah and it could tear down everything you got going on yeah you know? exactly yeah exactly some things you can't put on hold and come back to some things you just got to jump out there and go for it but Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it's a counterfeit, it's gonna tear it all down. So yeah, man, trust me, I get it. And I, exactly. I have people that be like, "Well, you passed up on that because listen, man, everything's not for you, and you gotta exactly. be you gotta be a good judge of character. You gotta be a yep. a good judge of the opportunity. What does it yeah. mean to you? What are you risking? What are you giving up? What are you What are you gonna gain? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. but some are just so gung ho on just booking, 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 and just want to work, yeah. and just want to be there. They'll take anything. Yeah. quit their job come back broke don't know what they're gonna do you know what i mean exactly, exactly. the opportunity wasn't really that big it was just yeah doing it. it's just what it was you gotta know it, yeah exactly exactly yeah, yeah so yeah. so have you always like because i see you you know i see your pictures and stuff like you're always dressed to the tee your hair is done your nails done your, your makeup's good you got your heels all that right so, <laughs> so i'm like with, with that thinking going back to the engineer thing was that were you have you always were you always like that or, or or do was that was that intentional because you're like i don't want to be the typical engineer i don't want to look like the typical engineer i want to be in front of the camera i want to make a difference so i gotta dress the part i gotta be eye popping type of you know what i mean like is was that yeah so i will say um i mean even in college you know i i just i i knew what i liked mm -hmm. and i knew that like i for one, my name is unique. You know what I mean? Like sure. I'm already unique. Yeah. Sure. So I'm like, why would I try to look like whatever they think I should look like, especially for female engineers, because they have like this look that they expect you to have. Yeah. And when you don't look that way, you know, of course they may come at you a different way or whatever. They're, I always get, oh, I'm so surprised at how articulate you are. Like, am I supposed to be a dummy? Because I, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's stupidity, right. but you have to challenge that. You can challenge that in a way to where it makes people really think like, okay, you know, maybe, and a lot of times it has to do with biases um, mm -hmm. is what I've learned. Um, but for me, it's, it's, it's both. It's intentional because I've been, you know, those things have been said to me so many times in my career, even from females, even from females of color, like, oh, well, I didn't think you were an engineer because you look different or, and you know what, you know, when it's coming from a place of someone truly complimenting you and saying, you know, well done, like you're getting out of that, that mold, yeah. you know, that people have, or, you know, when it's a backhanded compliment, exactly. you know, you know how to, you know how to handle both. But, um, I feel like you have to be, if you truly want to make a difference in this world, I don't care what you do for a living. If you really want to make a difference, you have to be intentional. You know, if the world says that this career field you're supposed to look like this or act like this or talk like this do the opposite yeah do the opposite you know like at the end of the day you're you have to live with yourself and you never want to feel like okay if i would have done this you know 
as I truly am, God knows what impact you would have had. You know, it's so many, so many times I've talked to kids, especially through my career, um, which I'm so thankful for. I, I do believe that that's the one of the primary reasons why God has kept me in engineering um, is just for outreach, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that um, it's like every time I'm talking to youth about, you know, just engineering, what it's like, I try to be very um, personable to them. You know, you want right. to, you want to seem relatable and you don't want people to feel intimidated. You know, yeah. you don't want them to feel like there's no way they can do this because they didn't come from, you know, the perfect family. I came from a single family, you know, home. So, so all of those odds, you know, they were stacked up against me, but I kicked the things down, you know, right. and I'm like, that's not going to stop me. So that's why I love talking to young kids. And I always tell them, be who you are. Of course, you want to dress professionally. You know, you have to know how to, you definitely have to know how to do that, but you don't want to be put in a box because once you're in that box, it's so hard to come out of that. Right. Yeah. It's expected yeah. of you. And when you deviate from it, it's a yeah. serious problem. <laughs> it's a serious yeah, problem. Exactly. Exactly. And you're like, uh, who is this? Like, it's me. You know, like, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's me. Like you can either accept me as I am or, right. you know, whatever. But yeah. is that why you choose to do um, career and uh, would you do career coaching, developmental coaching? Is that why you choose to do that? So you can kind of make your mark, like make an impact. Like, hey, listen, be you, do you, and you can be or great you. doing what they do, but you don't have to be. Yeah. Is yeah. I look at it as that was something that I didn't have when I was young. And okay. I know that, I, but I believe that one reason why I was able to stick with it is because I was just very determined. Like I knew when I was young and my mom always, you know, encouraged me. She's like, uh, if you want to do engineering, you can do it. You know, you just need to make sure you're doing your homework and you're studying. But um, I, I feel like, at least, especially with the people that I meet, the kids and the different schools, you know, more, um, I guess underrepresented, you know, areas mm -hmm. and all of that. Um, I want them to know that, hey, there's someone that looks like you. They don't have to be 50 years old or, right. you know, however old, you know, someone that's relatable to you that you can, you know, reach out to personally, yeah. um, you know. And so, yeah, just, you know, personal coaching, career coaching, just whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. So how can someone reach out to you if they if they're interested in, you know, utilizing your services? Well, so my my website is my name, so without the apostrophe, so cchiofficial.com okay. or my email address info at cchiofficial.com. Um, and, you, and you're doing it anytime. virtually as well, right? Because of COVID and all that? Right, right. So ever since COVID, everything has been virtual. Um, I think that even though things are reopening for the sake of the kids, I would still want to keep things virtual for now. Yeah. Um, even, you know, like uh, I had a session with um, Clark Atlanta University earlier this year, okay. and that was completely virtual, uh, which that was that was good. It was still interactive, but, you know, of course, it's better when you're in person, but you got to do what you got to do. So. Yeah, of course. As long as your verse, yeah. as, as long as your voice is being heard, mm. you know, you can make that impact. Let's get let's get into this influencer thing. So I, I see that you're doing some influencer work. How did that come about? Did they reach out to you because they saw your pictures? Because I know you like to do your pictures, you do your videos. It's like very eloquently done. And like, how did that come about? Or was that intentional too? Did you say I want to do? influence no <laughs> not at all the thing is that like my my pictures and my videos these are ideas that i have so yeah. i and I, i've been this way since college like i would literally think about okay what location do i want to be like what what's the what's the theme okay. you know what's the theme you know what i mean like if it's something like a beach or whatever the case may be i would just come up with all of these ideas and write it out and I would just get it done, yeah. you know? So my, for, for me, like the, the photo shoots in Paris, that was something that I just wanted to do. Okay. But things like that really stood out to a lot of um, different companies where they see Brazil and all these different places. And they're like, okay, like we want you to represent our brand. And I'm like, well, hold oh, wow. up because I don't just represent just anybody, <laughs> you know? So I've actually had to turn down quite a few because um, I do my own research and I try to see like, okay, what does the company stand for? Right. You know, um, and you know, you, you pray about it too because you want to make sure that, okay, 
Like, I don't want someone to just use me as a face for the product. And Absolutely. I'm definitely not going to do anything for free. Right. So it's like, you know, time is money, right? right. And I just want to make sure that it's a good exchange. Um, you know, who's their audience? Do I want them, you know, on my stuff as well? Because that matters. Um, that matters as well. So for me, it was more so building my own social media. Mm -hmm. um, I always had a vision of how I wanted it, you know, as far as like my photos and all of that stuff, nothing like too crazy. Like you see, you know, all that raunchy stuff, you know, right. you can still be, you can still be like sexy, yeah, look exactly. good without doing all that crazy stuff. Without you showing off that. everything you yeah. got. Man. You don't have to do that. You don't, yeah. you really don't. Yeah, <laughs> you really, I mean, it's really no need at all. Like, nope. but, yeah, no, that's the difference. No, and I and I'll day. say this to all the ladies out there. I'll say this to all the ladies out there who are looking for a like and want yeah. these guys to to you know they're, they're basically they're thirst trapping, right? Mm -hmm. For lack of a better term, they're thirst trapping. You yeah. can put your clothes on and and have it fitting and flowing yeah. and, and be eloquent, and they're still gonna be thirst trapping. Look at mine. I mean, look at literally look at my stuff. You know what I mean? I don't really show much. Yeah. You know, it may be fitting, whatever the case may be, but I don't really show much. And it's, you know, they'll just be lined up. You know what I mean? But my thing is with guys, they can they can sense desperation, in my Absolutely. opinion. So when you see like guys are very visual and they can sense that desperation. And so guys who are really looking for someone, they're not looking for all that. You know, they don't want something that anybody else can you know get a hold of that easily right. so um yeah, yeah that matters but you can still get the following with your clothes yeah. on I, yeah yeah i didn't know that she's a prime yeah. example she has a decent following she 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 but she listen man i'm telling you like the way you do it you do it as if you're well you are a business you're a brand you're you're building your brand and you're doing it the right way so people take notes when you want to do pictures you can do it yourself and it can be put together so well that people will so seek you out you could be yeah. heavily sought out to represent yeah. their brands and she's doing it herself most of the yeah. stuff is done with a camera phone am i correct some of the stuff like normally it's with a camera phone um yeah. recently it's been more you know having a photographer there but once COVID hit a lot of that was with my own phone and it you still know? looks good you know what i mean yeah like it's, yeah it looks professionally yeah. done Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah you just have to but that helped me a lot with acting though being in front of the camera so much okay with that that helped me so much and even you know with engineering because i have more of a leadership role yeah. having to talk to people all the time and having to you know have those conversations that no one else wants to have that helped me to be able to speak you know in these different actings the roles and the you know the scenes and being comfortable with myself yeah. um so all of it really just comes together. I feel like when your intentions are are pure, you know what I mean. Yeah. It it all comes together. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. indeed. And it's a, yeah. and like you said something too that I want people to understand if you're thinking about getting to acting, it's all about being comfortable in front of that camera, man. Because a mm -hmm. lot of people, because there's so much acting opportunities in Atlanta, they just want to jump into it. Excuse me. Because nowadays, everybody just wants to be famous. They want to be a star. They want yeah. to be a theme, right? So they just jump into it because they see the opportunity. But it's not that simple. It's really not that simple. You have to be intentional. You have to put in the work. You know what I mean? You have to do it in the right light. Like you were saying, like you do your research. You before you're glad that you stepped into this other role before you do it before doing it just straight out of college. Like yeah, yeah. it has to be intentional. This ain't a game. Act is not a game. It looks fun. Mm -hmm. It'd be fun. It's like a playground. Like for me, and I, I'm probably pretty sure for you, like it takes yeah. me back to being a kid. Yeah. Like yeah. when I'm on set, that's the best place in the world. And there's no feeling like being on set. There's yeah. no other feeling like being on set. On set is like some magical kingdom. Like it really feels yeah. like you're just away from reality. It really does. And it takes me to a whole nother place, a whole yeah. nother place. And it, yeah. like yeah. it's unmatched. But you got to work for that. It's so, like we said earlier, it's so cerebral and it's, it can be tiring. It's really a job. It's difficult. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, just the art of auditioning. If you, look, you could be the best actor you want to be or could be out of thousands of people. But if you can't nail the audition, you'll never make it to set. Mm -hmm. You'll mm -hmm. never make exactly. it. Exactly. It's an art to audition. Exactly.
Yes. Yep, yep. It looks easy. I tell my family and friends all the time, you know, you see your favorite actors on TV and it looks easy, but it never is. You know yep. what I mean? I mean, you're, you're having to portray characters who dealt with suicide, who tried yes. to commit suicide, who are dealing with eating disorders. So you're basically the portal. You're the voice for people who are watching you who may not yeah. have a voice or, you know, and so yeah. I, I don't think that people realize how much being on our side that's very freeing for a lot of people yes you know and being yeah. comfortable is, is like like you were saying too. getting back to just being comfortable in front of the camera mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. can have the lines down yeah like to a t but if you're not if you're uncomfortable on that camera it's going to show and it's going to suck yep. period yep. if you're comfortable then you have the freedom to be creative the freedom to stretch it the freedom to try things yeah. Because you're comfortable and you're just living in it. But mm -hmm. the minute that you're uncomfortable, you might as well just go home. Yeah, yeah. You can tell when it's forced. You can tell you can tell the motives. You can always tell the motives. I know um yes. even very, you know, the famous actors, they're always taking classes, you know, maybe the one on one coaching. But for me, I I don't because I don't like to waste my time, I'm I'm always out auditioning. Like I'm not gonna be, you know, studying and, and practicing and, and memorizing lines yeah. and all of this and not do anything with it. So my days are literally like some usually I'm not in bed until like two or three in the morning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, and that's just what it is. But it's like, I mean, I, I'm not gonna complain because a lot of the opportunities, even if you're not exactly where you wanna be you can look at where you are and you can say there are a lot of people who you know they were studying theater and everything else when they were younger and they haven't gotten a fraction of the auditions that i've gotten so i try to yep. keep that in mind like i may not be exactly where i want to be just yet but i'm so much further than you know i probably thought that i could ever be you yeah. know at this point you know yeah. so yeah because yeah. you're intentional yep yep <laughs> that's what it takes you have to be it intentional. is intentional yep. intention will get you there if you're just yeah. blowing in the wind, like, oh, I got this idea that I want to do it and I'll do it some days and some days I won't, I'm, you know, probably not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Everything not. that you set your mind to and, and, and I'm really big on lists, you know, actually writing things out, yeah. you know, it says in the Bible, write it out and make it plain. You know what I yeah. mean? And I, I try to keep that in mind, whatever I want to do, yeah. write it out. You know what I mean? And what, you know, and then at that point you can pray about it. You can see, okay, is this, does this make sense? You know, am I really, and, and you can talk to the people that you, you may need to. Sometimes you can't do it all by yourself. You may need right. other people, you know, in your corner, people, voices of reason, you know what I mean? But you definitely have to move with intention. And that's that's how you see quicker results, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and one thing about that list is we, 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 just by nature, we'll keep a list in our head. But guess what? Yeah. It gets jumbled. It's almost like yeah. the goddamn lottery ball with the balls just mm -hmm. going. You know what I mean? You never know what the hell's gonna pop out of there. It's like, yeah. and then one idea that that was a great idea or or even a task gets lost way back in the back, forgotten about, mm -hmm. and that's the one idea or task that could have catapulted you to the next level. Yeah. But it's back there somewhere. But if you have it on that list and you're looking at it daily, there yeah. you go. You're gonna get yeah. it done. I was just talking yeah. to my son about that. I'm like, dude, you have all these things you need to do, but they're not written down and you're forgetting about them. Mm -hmm. Write them down. And then every day, now you have that intention. Okay, oh yeah, yeah. I need to do this. Or oh, let me work towards that or something. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. It's it's very simple, but a lot of people don't do it. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I mean, you think about how many thoughts you have in a day and you really think that you're going to remember right. everything? No. Right. No. And my problem is I have way too many damn thoughts, man. <laughs> way too many i promise you man like and then my problem used to be i'm getting a lot better with this is i'll have a list but that mother be a hundred <laughs> things to do and i'll try to do right. them all in one day and it'd be like man yeah. and then and then at the end of the day i feel defeated because i didn't get them all done but fool you can't do a hundred things in a day mm -mm. pick your top five and work towards yeah. them complete them and you know move on 
So. Yeah, you, you definitely have to prioritize. That's yeah. one thing that I learned. Um, even in college, you know, we would have all of these exams and just yeah. craziness. And I would literally have to write out a list of like, which that was probably a bit too much the way I would do it. But to me, that was only because I knew how I was. I knew I wasn't like super disciplined. So, okay, like, how am I going to get all this stuff done? You know, you would have exams that take two hours and only yes. two problems on the exam, two problems. Like I've had that numerous times. And so it's like, it's so... Crazy. It's crazy. And I still, I literally kept copies of those exams. And I'm just like, okay, I want to be able to remember what I put my, what I went through, Yeah, you know, like to just sit up there and everything is so tedious and it's just, it's crazy, but it makes a world of a difference because you become more organized. Yeah. You know? And it also yeah. helps out when, when you have self doubt, look back at yeah. that and just be like, I did that. Yeah, like I yeah. did that. You might not even remember how to do it right now, but you can see I completed it. I did that. This was a, a man, huge what? obstacle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Man. We need that sometimes, though. We need to just look back, yeah. see how far we've come, and see what we've accomplished. Like some, so so many people don't do that. They don't take the time mm -hmm. to you know sit back and just look at what they've already accomplished and be like, yo, do you remember how hard you fought to get yeah. there and then to accomplish that? And you exactly, exactly, you know exactly. I was doing that like a few months ago. I, I had, um, here's the engineering. <laughs> I had like, so I took the hard drive out of my old computer, um, my computer from college, uh -huh. and I connected it to my one of my new computers and um, just to get like some old files. And I was just looking through like a lot of old exams that I had um, like photocopied and all of that. And I was like, okay, Lord, you were with me because <laughs> there was like, when I look at it now, like, I'm just like, OMG, like, this is crazy, but I'm so thankful because like, I know it wasn't me by myself. Yeah, and yeah. I think that a lot of times with people, it's, it's like two different extremes. Either you have people who are like super arrogant where they're like, oh, you know, I did all this myself, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Or you have people who, and, you know, they're always, they're their worst critics. They're always, right. you know, downing themselves like, oh, I could have done this better. And that's true. We can always do better. But, you know, accept yourself, accept what you've done. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, be proud of yourself because you're not going to always have people to congratulate you or to pat you on your back. Like, you have to do that yourself, you know? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. I was just watching yeah. an interview with Mike Tyson and, and Kevin Gates, and they were talking about how they, you know, they have to talk to themselves. They're like, you know, it's not yeah. about being arrogant, but man, you just have to tell you, I'm a bad motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, you got <laughs> this. Look how far you yeah. come. You know? Yeah. Sometimes yeah, you yeah. do that. Yeah. I do that. I do that sometimes. I'm just like, you have no reason to be nervous. First of all, these people can like keep it moving. Like they can keep it moving if they really want to, but you got this, like you've come this far, you know, God is with you. Like you don't have to worry about anything, yeah. you know, people who want to doubt you, like you don't have to try to, that's another thing. Um, and that's something I had to learn in college. It's like, you don't have to prove anything to anyone, whatever you do, let it be your, you proving things to yourself. Like, okay, yeah. like I had this vision or this goal and I wasn't sure if I could accomplish it, but I'm proving to myself that I can. It's never about proving anything to anyone else because you're probably going to fail or you're not going to, exactly. you know, you know what I mean? So it's like, that's wasting energy. A lot of people, you, you exert too much energy in the wrong places when if you use all of that for yourself and what you're working on, you wouldn't be stuck where you've been in the last five or 10 years. You would be yep. so much further and people, people just don't, don't see it that way. You know, the, the biggest, the, uh, the biggest, uh, breeding ground for that mentality is social media. People yeah. are pitting themselves against what other people are showing on there. Most of the stuff is not yeah. even real. You know, nope. depression sets in. I'm not doing enough where I'm at in my life. You're questioning yourself like, man, come on. Come on, man. It's sad. Yeah, it is. yeah. I mean, and, and it's it's really a trap because for, okay. So then going back to the influencer side of things, my mindset when I started saying yes to those deals was, I'm not huge on social media anyway because I see what it does to people and I don't compare myself myself to people. I see people do that and I've had people around me do that, but I don't like that way of thinking because to yeah. me. When you compare yourself to people, you open the door for jealousy. And that's never something that you want to, you, you can never Absolutely. go anywhere in life, you know, with that. So I try to 
limit the amount of time that I spend on social media, but I actually prayed about it. I was like, well, God, like, if I'm gonna be on here, I wanna be making money with this. Like, I, you know what I mean? Like, it's not all about the money, of course, but my thing is like, I want it to mean something. Mean like, more. I don't want it to, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not like, just I'm on not there just sifting through, here. sifting through, wasting yeah. your time. Like, it takes so much of your time. If you're gonna spend that time, let it mean, let it equal the money. Exactly. And so that's, that's my way of thinking. Um, I know, like, not everyone sees it that way, but I, I'd rather spend time doing something that's going to push me towards my goals than to be right. sitting there scrolling through, looking at what the next person has going on when they probably ain't no telling how they got that stuff. Like, why? Right. It's There's not no even telling if they even have it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like the, it's just you just don't know like people yeah. it's such a hype or like this thing about living up to what everyone else is doing but you don't even know if that's the case so just keep it moving be yourself yeah. forget everybody else it is a gym ladies and gentlemen i'm telling you li li listen to what she said if you're gonna be on there make mm -hmm. it intentional and then you can <clears> go <throat> do your own photo shoots make sure your pictures are looking great and brands will come to you now it will be worth your time to be on yeah. social media. Exactly, exactly. Like I, I remember having a discussion years ago and um, with a friend and I was like, you know, I always had these thoughts and I'm like, okay, well, I can see it, but like how to do it? Because even if I, I would have to hire a whole squad <clears throat> to be to be honest, I would need a whole squad. But for me, I'm like, okay, if I can be my own creative director and put these ideas out on paper, I can have whatever look I'm desiring. It's going to be to the point where these different people are going to come after me. Right. I'm not having to like run down people or, you know, hey, I'm yes. here. Like, look at me. Yes. You know, they come to me because I'm in my own zone. Preach. I'm doing things. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. And so it, it, it but because of that, like when you think that way, it's hard to you won't have a lot of friends or the ones that you do. You have a very select yeah. group of friends and that's cool yeah. because you don't want too many people around you exactly. um you know with elevation comes separation so i try yep. to keep that in mind too you know um uh, very few yeah yeah and very that's few. how that's how it should be i don't follow that's the crowd and i don't mm -mm. Fall for it man and i just don't deal with a lot of stuff that people deal with i'm not willing to do a lot of things yeah. people are doing man listen I, I, yeah. I my peace, my sanity. Right, know how exactly. To no, no is my yeah. best friend. Exactly. You know what exactly. I'm saying? No, and I don't owe you an explanation. No. Exactly. My time is mm. my, my peace is my peace. Yeah, yeah. Come over here, you get your feelings hurt because you ain't gonna get no yes. I mean, and, and that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is because i'm like i'm a super nice person but i'm not with the bs yes so i like i i like you said like i like to protect my peace that's not something that a lot of people have you know you yeah. have a lot of celebrities out here who you have a lot of money but you don't have peace at night you know what i mean None. that's something yeah and it's it like it really it really matters you know um being able to sleep at night and not worried about somebody coming and shooting your door down or right. you know having these random arguments with people that's not that's not a peace you yeah. know so that's not peace uh, man that's not yeah. peace i had to find my peace i was in a another industry and it, listen god took me from it and oh my god thank you jesus that's all i could have a praise break <laughs> Thank you, yeah, Jesus. Yeah, we'll pull on praise break. Right. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Man, listen, you're doing phenomenal things. I appreciate you coming on here, spending your time. We've been on here for an hour. I don't know if you've noticed. but It's been an hour. It's been an hour. Wow. The conversation. I, listen, we just kicking it on. Yeah. We just kicking yeah. it. But I want to end it since we both love Roll Tide, I want to end Roll Tide. With, a, with a little trivia. <laughs> okay. And, what and is you, that? And you, so you've had family members that play football, so you should know a few things about these teams, right? Uh-huh. So I got some questions for you. It's all football related. See if you can okay. see if you can get the answer. Or if, if, or if you know. We'll see. All right. So the first question I have for you. What I have here. Let's, let's see. Let me see what I got for you. Okay. Who is the all-time passing leader <laughs> for Crimson Tide? From, for, oh, from Alabama. Yeah. Uh, within 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 the last six years. No. All-time. All-time. Who's, who's the passing leader? All time. Well, are you talking about before I was born? Like you're including those people too? Yeah. But I can tell you this. 
most of these answers are the people <laughs> you probably went to school with. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So all time passing y'all. So that'll make it easier for you. Was it yeah. AJ McCarron? Was it Tua? Was it Matt Jones? Was it uh who's the other guy? We still got Jalen. Yep, you got Jalen and you got uh God, Blake who's... Sims. Yep, Blake Sims, yeah. I mean you got McElroy, job Stop Parker there. Wilson. Stop there, stop them. there, stop there. You're gonna okay. make it too, okay. too complicated for yourself. Who's the all time so passing, passing leader? Passing yards. I would say I feel like Mac Jones had quite a bit. See, Jalen, he had good yards, but see, he was exceptional. So he had like crazy rushing yards too. Yeah. So I feel like maybe his or not, yeah, rushing. So I feel like his his rushing maybe kind of took some of that off. So I would say Mac Jones, Tua had a good good amount. I would say between those two, not AJ McCarron. Um, I would say between Mac Jones and Tua. Is that your final answer? It's gonna have to be. <laughs> we only had a few to choose from. <laughs> it's actually AJ McCarron. How's AJ McCarron? Yeah, I was there when he was there. He had 9,019 yards in his career. Okay, well then, because Julio was there, I know. I think he played with. I know for sure Julio. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Julio. Julio had a lot of yards. Had, who else did he have over there? He Kevin had, Norwood. Um, he had Kevin Norwood was there at that time. Yep, he had Drake maybe. Um, God, what's the guy he plays with the Raiders, or did he leave? Uh, jo not Josh Jacobs. No, no, the wide receiver. There. No, oh, he. I think he's with the Cowboys now. Um, uh, uh, Amari Cooper. Yeah, he had him right. He had him for at least a year or two. And then McCarron, because uh, I feel like McCarron came out in like 2012 or 2013 ish, maybe 2014. Yeah, but yeah, because McCarron was there when I was there. Because I remember it was like, well, we won't go into that history. But um, <laughs> I thought I thought Amari played with. So I remember we had like Ridley, Amari Cooper, Kenyon Drake, all of them. Yeah. Um, but Kevin Norwood was, I think, with uh, McCarron. Yeah, I didn't realize McCarron had more. You like, know what I saw? Okay. You know, and it's just like this ain't any trivia, but I was looking at the numbers and like Julio. He didn't have like big numbers. No, he didn't. They but, ran but when more you back think about then. it, yeah, but like at that time, so it wasn't like when Julio was playing, it wasn't like, you know, last year when we had Devontae Smith, like we were just yeah. like beast mode, yeah. you know, Henry Ruggs, Jerry yes. Judy, all of them. Like at that time, we were big, we were really big in the running game. Yeah. So I'm talking about like Trent, Mark Ingram, yep. Jocelyn Fowler, all of them. Like, don't get me started because we can really talk Alabama football, okay? Like during that time, we were so, like our running game was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Our winning game was crazy. Yeah, yeah. All right, next yep. question. Who is the all-time, okay. who has the all-time rush yards the most? Out of... Najee uh, Harris, Mark Ingram, Derrick Henry, Kenyon Drake, uh, who else? Trent Richardson. Let's stop there. It wouldn't be Trent. No, it ain't gonna be Trent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, he was there when McCarron was there too. Yeah, uh, but see, we had a lot of good, we had a lot of backs. So. A lot of backs, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Najee Harris, Derrick Henry. You said Najee Harris, Derrick. One King and Drake either. Mm -mm. Um, mm -mm. So it's Najee Harris and Derrick Henry. I would say between the two. <laughs> well, see. Let's see. So Henry run the highest man, and running back it, they usually don't. So that in itself, I feel like he might have had more. Because when you think about Najee Harris, it was him and He caught Brian a lot Robert. out of the backfield too. Najee did. Yeah, yeah. Man, miss... it was my answer between Najee Harris and Derrick Henry. You got to pick one. <laughs> well, I, I, I feel like Najee had more, but I also feel like Derrick Henry could have had more because he won the Heisman. Yeah. And running backs usually don't. So I would say... Uh, pick one, pick one, pick one, pick one, pick one, pick one. I'm going to go with... I'm going with Derrick. Nope. 
I knew it was Najee. Najee. Najee got him by like 300 yards. Najee has 3,843. Derrick Henry had 3,591. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One more. You got to get one. <laughs> man, I'm, I'm getting all of them because I know the times that they were there. Man, please. I we know. just have so many greats that it's just like they just stack them. You're like a historian. Other. Yeah, th- like this is like the modern day Miami back when, you know what I mean? Like everybody used to yeah. come out of Miami, man. It was ridiculous. Everybody in the league yeah. was from Miami. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Most rushing yards in a single season. Do you want that one? Or I can give you who has the most rushing TDs. Or who has the most receiving yards? Which one you think you could take a stab at? Which one you want? I mean, <laughs> receiving yards better be Devontae Smith. You're right. 39, 65. Yeah. Most I mean, receiving that's a done TDs. Deal. Most receiving huh? TDs. Most receiving TDs. Receiving. Um, between. So this is recent. Who, yeah, who this is it between? Be, and you got Devonta Smith, Jerry Judy, Ruggs. Uh, we even go. Um, God, what's the I other guy? Feel... Atlanta. Um, Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, Julio, Amari. Who else is over there? Hey, man, how you? That's not even like a good like that question. Like, <laughs> how you gonna have all of them? I'm not. I'm gonna give you three. We going. Okay. Calvin Ridley, Devonta Smith, and Ruggs. So it can't be Ruggs. Of course, it can't be Ruggs or Jerry Judy because I feel like all of them. Yeah, it can't be them. They shared um, too much. It was too many. It, it was it was too much. Yeah, and yeah. even with Devonta Smith, we still had Waddle, um, but still Waddle got hurt. I would say Devonta Smith for that one too. Ding ding ding, yeah. ding 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 ding! Man, please, it was a ding 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 for all of them. <laughs> you know, ding ding ding. <laughs> nah, I give it to you. You know your stuff, though. You know your stuff. <laughs> You're like a historian. You like you got such and such and such and such. You know they played it. No. Yeah, like so and so was the quarterback. Blah blah blah. You no, got... all of that stuff matters though, because like you said, with Julio, you would think that he had more. Yeah. You know, but really. we were so heavy with the backs at yeah. that time. He didn't even have like like in in uh, a single season. He never had over eight touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah, he just did. I mean, he did his job, though. I think yeah. we had, um, who was the other guy that was the receiver? I remember Kevin Norwood, Kenny Bell. Yeah, all of them. But they weren't getting the ball as much. I mean, you got no. you got Big Mark. You got Big Trent. You got all of them, you know. Yep. I mean, yeah. Some beast back there, man. Yeah, all right, I, mean, I got that, one question what for it you. Is. I got one is. question for you, if you can okay. get in the ballpark. How many wins does Saban have with Bama? Well, let's see. So we had um, 2009 championship, 2011, 2012. No, not championships, just wins, period. Oh, wins. I think it's well. Okay, so you mean regular season. um, Total. uh, Total with Bama. Including championships, everything. Yeah. (laughs) He has to. (laughs) He has to. (laughs) Shut up. All right, you want me to give you some options? No, no, no. Well, okay. I know that it's well over, because let's see, we have, it has to be well over 80. Over 80, right? Yeah, it's over 80. You want me to give you some options? Give you multiple choice? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Is it 120? Is it 145? Or 165? Well, 120 is too round of a number, so it, that wouldn't be it. Uh, 145. Look at the engineer uh, view. <laughs> it's like you over here working equations. And, that's too round of a I number. Am. You know. I am. <laughs> I'm like, if you, round, if you round this up, like technically we're looking for an exact number. So it can't be like a rounded number. Okay. So 120 is off the table. 145, uh, if you consider the number of games in a regular season, and he's been there since, he got there 2007. Because I remember we did horrible 2007 we were like seven and six and that was with john parker wilson but then t- 2008 is when julio got there okay so that means you're working him 
air equation. <laughs> yeah, because I'm just being... <laughs> Shut up. You're being a distraction, okay? I rebuke you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I would say total... Yeah, it would have to be over 145, considering bowl games, all that good stuff. Over 145. You said 167? Mm -hmm. 165. 165, mm -hmm. 165, 145. It has to be 165. You're right. No? 165. It's right. <laughs> yeah. Cause, no, because I'm calculating. I'm like, yeah, okay. 165. I got to blow the horns on you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, we hey, we knew that 120 was too long. Like, you can go ahead and set that to the side. Why don't you pick that up again? <laughs> yeah, I was rounding out. No, no, we can't do that. Yeah, no, nah, I can't be rounded. No. Uh, yeah, you know your stuff. You know your stuff. You're like a historian over here. So yeah, cool. man, I, I told you, it's, it's a family thing. Like, we, yeah. every year, like, it would be a big deal. Like, we would watch, you know, the games together. My uncle, who played, like, in the 80s, I think, um, you know, I would I would love to like, even if I'm like in Georgia or wherever, I would just call him up and be like, man, what you think about the game? Like, what about this play? Like, what what were they thinking? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I need to go out on that field if they're going to be acting like that. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's always been a big thing, man. It's always been a big thing. So that's dope. I, I enjoy the game. I mean, I, I love to watch Alabama. But to be honest, I'm sitting here watching LSU. Oklahoma, every oh. especially because I was born in Oklahoma, so um, yeah, good I'm just watching it good all. Football, man. Yeah, yeah, you gotta love for the game, you know. Yeah, for sure. And I like to see the guys grow and you know move on and get their awards and yeah. all the good stuff. So yeah, yeah. oh, I love yeah. Derrick Henry, man. I love what he's doing over there. Yeah, he finally got his just due. You know what I mean? Like the first season, they weren't really running him like they should. They didn't. They they didn't figure it out yet. I don't think they realized who they really had over there. You know what I'm saying? Don't even get me started. I think that was the, what was that? The 2016 or, two, was it 2016 or 2015 when we played Ohio State in one of those playoff games. And we were, we were up. We were up in the first half. And then Lane Kiffin changed it. He decided to change the plays. And I'm just like, why Lane, would you stop yeah. what's working? Yeah, you know, like Lane was notorious I mean, for it. That's like yeah. even in that national championship that they lost, and they were up, and they had Bo, and they were running him, and he was yeah. doing great, and he got hurt, but they still had oh, the Damian Harris. Damian Harris was yeah. running great. They just stopped running the ball. They just stopped running the ball. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and that's when they had um, wasn't it Blake? I think Blake was with him, and he didn't, he couldn't pass that well. I think was that Blake? That might have been Blake. I mean, the same thing happened um, when we played what Clemson two year, two or three yeah. years ago out in yeah. California. Like yeah. we were doing okay, you know. I think that was when Tua was the the quarterback, and like how we go all the way out to California and get blown out like that, like yeah. that, y'all, no, like yeah. that's unacceptable. So yeah. I'm glad Lane yeah. got up out of there, man. But he wouldn't yeah, listen he to David. To. David would tell him mm -hmm. what the, what the, um what to uh, call, and he would just do what he wanted to do. But when you think about it, though, you're paying this this coordinator all this money. You shouldn't have to tell him how to do his job. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Saban shouldn't have I me. Mean, I, I understand, you know, his role, too. But it's like, okay, Lane Kiffin, like, you paying him how much money? Yeah. And you got it to, because he ain't calling the right plays? Like, you got big Derrick Henry out there, and you stop running him? Right. You know? I, it's I, just, I, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, it ain't make sense at all. I'm so glad he's gone. Yeah. Well. <laughs> but a lot of but but a lot of them will go and be you know a head coach somewhere like Kirby Smart or Sarkeesian, all of them. But it's like I always tell people, just because you're a good coordinator doesn't mean you're going to be a good head coach. Exactly. You know that's a different job, different roles and responsibilities. So right. it's not you know exactly the same. And you see what um, happened to Lane. Yeah. It, yeah. These, uh, you know what was crazy though? I think they played Bama the hardest, and then they went on to just suck. They almost beat in that game. Lane, uh, who who they play? Um, who's the coach? Uh, was that somewhere in Florida, right? Yeah, you you. Not Florida International. You see, not UCF. If it, is it UF? Is it UCF? No, it's not UCF. What? Florida, not or Florida International, maybe. It, it, if I... Florida International. I don't know, but they almost Wherever. beat Bama. They almost beat Bama. I was like, man, what the hell's going on? I think Lane had to, had their number for a minute, and then you know, saving. Oh no, no, no! You're you're talking about was it last year when because he went to 
It was last. Was year. it Ole Miss or somewhere that he went? He went to one of those Mississippi schools because I remember they Ole Miss because they it, gave us a really hard time. Yeah, and they like, look at him. And they almost beat him. Yeah. Almost beat them. I was like, yo, they got their number right now. I'm like, Lane, yeah. Lane pulling out. You know what I'm saying? Lane already knew what they're gonna do. He was calling the calls. He was calling the calls. But, I knew he was calling. But the calls. Lane, but he knew what time it was though. Like he knew they were beat before they started. You know. But my the thing that I noticed the most in that game is that. He, as a head coach, as a leader, even when you know that your team is down, that you're losing, you never express that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that could be discouraging. And I saw that a few times, yep. you know, just in his facial expressions. And I'm just like, how do you think? Because it came across as this is a win that I really want for myself. I want to be able oh, to yeah, it was say personal. that I beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it wasn't about the team. And you can't win like that, yeah. you know? That's why he yeah. didn't win. But they fought hard. I'm telling you, oh, my God. I was like. I was scared. I was like, yo, how you going to let Lane come in here and beat you with these guys who shouldn't even be on the same field? Like, they were yeah. just – Bama couldn't do it. They were running that fast offense, that fast up-tempo, and them guys were gassed, man. And you know, I think all the linebackers was, like, hurt. The the, the yeah. linebackers were hurt, so they couldn't keep up with the wide receivers. The running backs out of the backfield, it was – it was terrible, but you know, Bama. But every team that we play, they do that, right? Like Arkansas, yeah. Tennessee, like they'll be like zero and seven the whole season. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> like all of a sudden, you know, we like, where did that come from? That's their like, Super Bowl. Seen. That's their Super Bowl. So they show That's up. True. You know what I'm saying? If we could beat Bama, the season is good. You know what I mean? We could lose everything else. We beat Bama. Man. That's how it goes, man. But I'm, yeah, that's a loser's mentality. So. I appreciate you coming on. Great conversation. I love the Bama talk. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I'll keep, I'll keep going. I'll keep going. <laughs> Talk about that Bama, right? I'm, right, listen, right. I'm curious to see what, what, what becomes of them this year, man. I think they can run it back. They always can run it back. They always got the potential to run it back. As long as Saban is there. Yeah. Who's the, um, who's the quarterback this year? Do you know? Um, I think it'll be Bryce Young. Bryce who? Bryce Young. Bryce Young. Was he there? Yeah. He was there already? Yeah, he was He was there last year. Yeah, he came from a uh, modern-day five-star quarterback. He's really good. Um, he's really good. So, and then we have one of Bear Bryant's, um, I think, great-grandson. Okay. That's a quarterback, but I think he may be, like, second or third string. So, mm, okay. Uh, I know but we played Miami in Atlanta, right. our first game. For real? Yeah, first game. I think it's um, Labor Day weekend, I want to say. I might have to go to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's going to be a good one. Oh, yeah. You see uh, Clemson got Manning's uh, nephew. Oh, what well, what that what that's, what that's that mean? No, I mean uh, nothing. No, I'm just it, it don't. It don't. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, what's that supposed to be? I don't mean shit. Yeah, I was like, I mean... Nah. Congratulations. I'm just talking yeah. football. You know, I'm just talking football. Nah, nah. I mean, honestly, like Clemson is cool. I liked them when Deshaun Watson was there, but of course I don't like, you know, when they beat us. But I always feel like we have the we always have the better team. Yeah. Holistically. I feel like a lot of the teams have these one or two really good players. Yeah. But when you look at them like LSU, I think 2019. We're the only team that almost beat them. I think that was the yeah. year that and should have um, beat them. Yeah, should have and should should have beat them. Yeah, it was some mistakes on our part. But when I say they were like they were so good, like I yeah. I watched that national championship when they played Clemson, and I was up there rooting for LSU. Like y'all better get that. They beat the you know? brakes off of them. They man, they ran they ran circles around them. Yes. I'm like man, like okay yeah. LSU. I loved it when yeah. Ohio State beat the hell out of Clemson this year. Well, la well, last year, right? Yeah, last, last year, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I hate Clemson, yeah, and I love it. It's just mm -mm. Yeah. like they and they got to remember that Dabo Sweeney came from Alabama, I you know? know. So and whenever Saban retires, he'll probably go there. Probably so. so yeah. yeah, but I felt yeah. like I felt like with the Ohio State and the Clemson game that if Clemson beat Ohio State, then they would have gave Bama a good good game in the national championship i didn't want that was it national it was for the national championship yeah it was. It was, yeah, yeah yeah it would have been because we played notre dame i mean to be honest i i didn't care either way um i, I mean, knew I, but I, I knew i knew bama would smash ohio state though i knew they would smash them clemson would have gave them a harder fight they, devil devil knows how to play them man not to say that they would have won but devil knows how to play Notre, um bama 
So I wanted them to get Ohio State so they could just smash them and just be done. And that's what happened. And I loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, I've, I've, I've met a lot of obnoxious Ohio State fans. So it's just stuff like that really turns you off to where, like when Terrell Pryor played for Ohio State like years ago, yeah. I actually liked them at the time. They, they were, I was somewhat of a fan. Yeah. But when you meet those obnoxious ones, you're just like, okay, you can keep it moving. Like, right. we're going to play y'all and y'all going to be going back home on your bus crying. Right. So, exactly. yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm going to have to check that Miami game out, though, for real. Yeah, yeah, it'll be it'll be fun. Yes, yeah. indeed. Well, listen, yeah. I appreciate you for coming on, spending time with your boy, kicking it, you know, having a good conversation, yeah. dropping some gems too, because you definitely dropped some gems tonight. So I'm hoping that the viewers can take that away and and, and do something with it. And uh, yeah, man, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem. Thanks for having me. And um, yeah, if anyone wants to reach out, have questions, feel free to do so. Yes, all of her links are in the description. Um, also, be on the lookout for season four of Snitch on Amazon. Amazon Prime. Prime. We are both a part of that series, so she is my castmate. So y'all check us out on that. And also yeah. check her out on um, Instagram. It's beauty of intelligence, so beauty underscore of underscore intelligence on Instagram. Yeah. Check her out, man. She's doing phenomenal things. Phenomenal woman. Okay phenomenally <laughs> <laughs> right thankful 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 so hey guys yeah. every tuesday night i'm here kicking it 10 p.m eastern standard time you never know who i might have i do this for you guys can't do it without you all right until next time peace 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 thank you guys for tuning in thank you cc and we out all right thank you Ooh.